Carl Gaboy has always called northern Minnesota home. He was born in the Indian Hospital on the Fond du Lac Reservation, raised in the northern woods near Ely, and finally settled in Duluth. He received an art degree from the University of Minnesota with the intentions of teaching. What he is best known for is his art. I did teach in uh, Flint, Michigan for one year and in Ely for two years. And then after that, I wanted to do something else. And so I, I took graduate courses at Superior uh, and then I went to University of Montana and I got a master's degree there. And I always was thinking I wanted to do something else, but I didn't know what it was. And then right about at that time, Indian Studies field just opened up and they were looking for somebody to teach American Indian art. Usually places like the University of Minnesota had a music teacher, had a, a political science teacher and a language teachers, but they didn't have an art teacher to teach American Indian art history. So not only did I get a job as a university college professor, but I had my own slides with me. So that made me twice as uh, respectable in the academic field. I brought my own curriculum. So there was no question in my mind what I would be when I grew up. Well, what happened was, of course, by the time I went to college, it was agreed that I should do something to make a living. So in this case, it was being a teacher. And, and then I did my painting at home. One of the labels that I had as an Indian artist was that the artist was the artist of the everyday. That is, it was, I, I didn't paint mythology and I didn't paint visionary work. I did Indian ladies skinning muskrats. Uh, I did the everyday work, uh, sometimes far back in history, uh, trappers, uh, homemakers, uh, harvesters, women working in gardens, things like that. The opportunity to visually depict the stories of the Ojibwe he had heard while growing up came when he was commissioned by his home reservation to do a series of murals at the Boys Fort Tribal Center. These have much meaning for Carl. That was the first time that I'd ever done that during my whole career. I purposely avoided doing mythological work. I thought there are many, many art artists out there that are doing that and let them do it. I'm going to do this. So when I started doing that, I thought maybe I could do a few because I, I, I did the paintings the way I remembered when I heard them and what I thought and what I visualized when I heard them. And I'm a realistic artist, so I had realistic images in my paintings. I mean, there's all kinds of myths uh, about the, that the Ojibwe have, you know, how the chipmunk got its stripes and how the beaver got its flat tail. Well, I didn't want that. I wanted the big ones, the flood stories, the Nanabuju, and all the things that he did to create the world that we know today. So I wanted to do the big ones, and I had an opportunity then to do those seven murals that were that were mythic subjects. So then after I did those, I started doing astronomical legends. And I've been doing that for the last couple of years now. So it's, it's kind of new. I don't know if there's any people out there who miss my old style, but, uh, but it's, uh, I've started doing this for a while. A true Renaissance man in every sense of the word. His interest in painting astronomical subjects combines his love for art, history, and science. I was always interested in biology and zoology and astronomy, and I like to think of myself as a kind of a backyard astronomer, but it wasn't a field that I trained in. And then all of a sudden, a couple of things came together for me. And one was the interpretation of the rock paintings north of Ely, and the other was connecting them to astronomy. That happened right after uh, the big impact of Fajada Butte and Southwestern astronomy came about. Basically, I wondered if there was anything around here that was similar to that. And I thought, well, they're rock paintings, but I wonder if they have any connection with astronomy. And then all of a sudden I woke up in the middle of the night, my eyes big as saucers, and I said, my God, their constellations. So it took me a couple of decades to put everything together. It took a long time, including a lot of 
going back in the, the field again at night, looking at stars, and going to the rock painting sites again, looking at them. And I, I knew I had something, but I didn't dare uh, publish it uh, because I was kind of afraid of uh, some pushback from the scientific community. Carl didn't have to fear any such thing. In fact, he was told that if he put that together in a doctoral thesis, he would have had his doctorate by now. Today, he is one of many in a growing colony of Native artists in the region. There's a beautiful art gallery right now in Duluth here, the ACO people, just putting together a real nice uh, exhibit space. Uh, there are many Indian artists that are working in Duluth now. Uh, I met many in Bemidji, uh, and we organized art shows over there. Uh, so it's, it's uh, you know, times have changed, and so I'm, I'm happy to say that I'm part of a big group now that's, that's working, rather than working all by myself. George Morrison once said that he never was able to live completely on his art. And I had always dreamed that I could do that. And it, but, it, but it never really happened. I always just slowly starved until I got a real job. And I suppose if I had advice to give to a younger artist, find a good day job that, that you like and uh, do your painting on weekends.